What makes you an artist? I think to be an artist is to create. You have to finish something. You have to, you know, because you can toil away, but I feel like until it's out in the world, it, is it art? I don't know. It's a tree falling in the forest. But yeah, I think it's the creation for me. You know, to have created it and put it out. That's the art. You're an artist now. What do you think makes someone an artist? Is that a different thing for you? Do you think, I mean, a lot of people say they're artists or they're writers and there's like this debate. Well, if you're not getting paid for it, are you really an artist? Are you really a writer? Oh, yeah. Um, no, I don't think you need to be paid for it. <laughs> I mean, throughout history, I think, you know, people had to have patrons. They had to, the king had to commission your portrait and that's the only way you're going to eat. And so you do a certain type of art to make sure that you can eat and then you do your own art in the back burner. You know, I do my own movies and I work for others and sometimes I'm more invested in the project than not. You know, like I shoot interviews like this for people for corporate stuff. Um, I want it to be good. <laughs> I want it to look nice, but it's not like my art. That's a job, you know, and so I always make sure I have my artistic things that are coming from my brain more also always going, you know, even though I enjoy like I enjoy being in AC where I don't have any control over what is the image, you know, <laughs> might get my little once in a while, you know, you can say well, a tiny thing, you know, <laughs> maybe they take it, maybe they don't. But, um, you know, but I like, I think it goes back to being in bands. Like I like being the bass player sometimes. I like being the lead singer, you know, and it's like figuring out where you fit into those spots on whatever project you're on is really important and making sure you don't step out of the lane too far <laughs> when you are in a more supportive role. Um, but yeah, I don't think you need to be paid for your art to be considered an artist. I think when I meet people and I'm like, that person's an artist is because I think they're a genius or I think they think a little differently than everybody else. And that's like where it's coming out. You know, it's like, if you surprise me with something, if your humor's like a little bit off or, you know, is there something new to what you're doing? I'm like, that person's an artist. Did anybody try to rein you in, especially in high school? No. I had very supportive parents. Um, they let, I was the youngest of four and by a lot. So I was mostly home with my parents all the time. You know, like everybody else was at college. Uh, and they, you know, there wasn't a lot of money. So it wasn't like you can go take all these classes or you can go to this museum or whatever. But like, you know, they gave me their guitar from the 60s and they gave me whatever art supplies I wanted. And I just sat in my room and did whatever I wanted. Um, and, so, and they always were like just very... There was no pressure to go to college. There was, I mean, I think because maybe we, you know, my sister was the first generation in our family on either side, I think, to go to college. You know, so it wasn't like it was like it was something you had. There was nothing you had to do. It was go live your life, enjoy it, have fun. My dad's very proud that I got into music because I think that's something he wanted to do. And, you know, and they're like very proud that like I travel the world and I get to create and I do all, you know, I'm doing what I want. Um, so I think for them, it was just about happy. If you're happy or you're good, you know? <laughs> and so they were like verbally very supportive. There wasn't like a lot of monetary, like go off to this, you know, academy or college and learn whatever you want. That wasn't there, but like the, the do whatever you want, live your dream, go try to make it happen. That was a hundred percent there. When you got to Boston, did you see other people that had come from situations like yours, or maybe they were a little more cookie cutter and they were rebelling against what? families wanted. Boston's a funny town because I learned a lot about it once I got there. You know, like obviously I knew Harvard was there, you know, and, but like there are so many colleges there. And because I showed up at the age where I should have been going to college, I think everybody just assumed that I was, you know, and so you're with suddenly, and especially I hung around Harvard Square because that's where the folk club was that I like to play at Club Passim. I got a job at a record store right around the corner. So I was in Harvard Square all the time and people just started to assume I went to Harvard. <laughs> Because I was just always there, you know. But no, and so you meet people, and especially like I think people that from money don't want to ever tell you that they're from money. You know, they want to seem like they're on your level of poverty, and they are not. You know, and you learn that later. You know that they had more opportunity all along than you did, or whatever. You know, but at that in that playground, you're the same for a minute. You know. Um, so yeah, so I think in Boston, especially, it's a very rich white city that like, you know, people have like more supportive stuff. Um, but there's also a huge underground art community of people like me, you know, that came from nothing and just want to make weird stuff. And like, it's very like um, experimental people doing cool stuff. Where does the inspiration for your art come from? Oh boy. Um, 
that's a hard question. I'm not, I'm not sure. You know, <laughs> I just get ideas and go down paths. You know, the paths tend to reveal themselves, you know, as you start working on something like often with our films, like we have a script or whatever. And then once we get into production, like it kind of takes a different route, you know? Um, but yeah, like I like things that are surreal. I like things out of the norm. Um, so maybe it's more like dreamlike or more fantastical, but not fantasy. <laughs> I don't like wizards and stuff. Like that's fine. It's not. That's not what I mean by fantastical. Just stuff that's like more dreamlike. I guess is you know where the plane that I'm trying to pull from. Um, you know, I love very colorful cinematography. So I love like 1970s movies from everywhere, but especially like Italian giallo. Like they were not playing by any rules, any three act structure. None of that mattered. It was like were the lights cool? Was it dreamy? Um, and maybe, I don't know if some of it is like me viewing it 50 years later, and this is just what the sixties and seventies looked like in Italy, you know, but now in on film stock and everything, it just seems so dreamy. Um, so I just like stuff that's not reality. I don't care for reality or drama, like drama in the, the movie genre term at all. Like, I don't want to see two people having a relationship fight unless there's like a monster or something, <laughs> you know, to make it, cause it's not interesting to me. And I think... It's because it goes back to me very, very grounded, pragmatic person. Like, I just don't want to, like, I don't need to watch drama, like, play out. Like, I, you know, there's enough of that in real life. You know, I don't need to see real life on screen. Um, I think sometimes, like, when you're shooting, people are like, oh, that's not realistic. This light shouldn't be there. And I'm like, but it's a movie. It doesn't, if it looks good and it works for the story, like, put the light there. You know, <laughs> let it be orange. Let it be blue. Like, whatever. Like, it, you know, we're creating the world. And for me, that's the biggest thing is create the mythology, create the world, and then play in that. So growing up, you weren't into The Notebook or <laughs> that wasn't your favorite movie? No? <laughs> no. I, uh, we had a, uh, uh, not a, uh, like mom and pop video store in town and they would do like five dollars, five bucks, five days. And so like I would just be in the B movie section, like any Roger Corman movie, I would like realize like, okay, this is gonna be weird. I'll watch that. Uh, action, sci-fi, anything that was, you know, like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> I was watching the weirder sci-fi stuff. Um, B-movies, the stuff. Like, yeah, I was into like all that. And not so much like, I think it's like Titanic was really big when I was a kid. You know? <laughs> like, I did see it, but like, did I care? Not really. You know? <laughs> Do you think art comes from pain? Yeah, I think um, for a lot of people, you know, they won't create unless they're depressed, you know? And I think... Certainly with like my songwriting, you know, when I started out, it was like, these are my complaints or these are the things I'm depressed about or I'm, I'm really sad. <laughs> so I'm going to write a song about that. And as I got older and I got like, you know, maybe more balanced in my life and in my brain, my chemicals, you know, in my mind, um, that became less interesting to me, you know. And so, you know, the songs became more abstract or just about conversations or whatever, um, but I think for a lot of people, they can't create without that pain, you know, and I think that's always in the background, you know, I think to be a sensitive person and to um, need to express that and need to deal with our emotions and deal with like how we're responding to things. I, I definitely think that always will come out in art. But does an artist that's great necessarily have to have a tragic life? No, I don't think so. I think like I think our brains do a lot of weird stuff, you know, and I don't think they need to necessarily have like PTSD or some tragedy to pull from. I think being alive is hard. <laughs> I think getting through a day is difficult and like that could be plenty to pull from and do something very creative and that touches other people. Has anyone ever come to you for advice on getting started, being an artist, being a musician, a filmmaker? I, I think I get that question a lot as like a woman, like how do you start as a woman in X, Y, Z? Um, and usually, you know, it's like, it's the same advice. It's like, just go, go do it, you know, <laughs> go make, go start something, find your people, find your friends that also may have a camera or may have whatever to bring into your, your creative soup. Um, I think that's the only, cause I'm such a hands-on person. That's my only advice. Just go start, you know, and it's getting easier and easier. Like, I won't ever shoot on an iPhone, <laughs> knock on wood. <laughs> but it's there for people that are beginning. Like, yeah, get your iPhone, go do it. Figure out your angles, you know, figure out what you think makes a good cinematic image. Um, 
it's it's definitely getting easier to just go and go and do it with LED and, and iPhones and stuff. Um, but you know, I think it's like a don't be afraid from like the more from the art side, you know, the technical side, whatever, you'll learn it if if you have an aptitude for it, if you want to, or you'll find somebody that knows it to help you. Um, but from the art side, I think it's just don't be afraid. You know, I, I know a lot of people, you know, we all deal with like imposter syndrome. I have a lot of friends that are like, oh, but I don't want to release anything because what if people say it's bad? And I'm like, what if they do? <laughs> you know, like, is like, is their opinion the thing that's going to stop you? Like, do your art and release it, you know, and move, like move on. You know, um, I never want to be like languishing on the same project, you know, like I want to do it, let it get it out and move on. Like I'm ready to go on to the next thing. By the time the other thing is done, I'm, I'm, <laughs> my mind is like, what else is new? Like I always want to be working on the new thing. Um, which is like we were talking about promotion. Like it makes promotion hard because like by the time it's done, like I don't, I want to do something else. I don't want to talk about this movie. You know? I just wanted to get out. Um, but yeah, like for art, I think it's the creation and it's the release. You have to release it so you can move on. So you have to finish it. And so when you tell people or give advice, whether it's a male or female, that they, they it's almost like they can't be, they can't really care what people think. I guess is is that yeah. is that kind of what it boils well, down? Well, I think also too people are often looking for like well what's the magic for success because it's obviously not hard work. You know, what is what is your secret? What's your secret like ingredient? And it's like no, the answer is hard work. <laughs> like, so if you don't want to do the hard work, you're not going to finish anything, you know. And you can give people all the advice in the world if they're not going to work at it, it's not going to happen. You know. Sure. That's really cool. So when you were working at this record store and everyone thought you were going to school there, <laughs> But you were really working. I mean, that, that's its own movie right there. Yeah. That, I mean, that's a really cool. And then I think at one point somebody from Harvard interviewed me for the magazine. And that even made and like I didn't say I went that, you know, it's just like because I was playing at the folk club, they were like interviewing like people they thought were interesting. And like, I think the fact that I ended up in that magazine, like made it even more like, oh, she's Harvard. <laughs> Whatever. Um, even though it didn't say that in the article, you know, it was just like in the Harvard magazine. Um, like for a while that was online. It's like. This is like another tangent of mine, but the early internet is disappearing. And it's, I like my, I hate that so much from an archival sense. Like our whole lives of like MySpace, any articles written about me in the early 2000s that were on like boston.com or whatever, they're gone. Like maybe there's archives somewhere, but I don't even think so. Like that first 20 years of the internet, it's like, you're never gonna be able to find it again. It's really disappointing. Um, but for a while, that was something that would come up when you Googled me, <laughs> it was this article, you know. Right. But yeah, it was very high fidelity in there. Like, we were so cool, you know, or we thought we were. Like, the three of us that worked in that record store, you know. One was the older guy, dyed his hair black. He was in the bands. He was awesome. My best friend at the time, also working at the record store. Um, so it was a fun couple of years. I was there, like, almost three years. But the thing is, you weren't a student there, so you had this other perspective that would I would actually make a great story if you ever I don't know maybe people think their own story is boring I but know, I think I think it'd be realism. cool I don't know <laughs> Sophia I don't know it'd just be neat and then just because the thing is you you were you had this different perspective I don't know I can't say what you thought but it just it just sounds interesting but so yeah. if because you, it seems like you're not afraid to try things mm -hmm. when people ask you you know well not just how do I get started but you know how do I whether it's crowdfunding or whatever it is. Um, how do you tell them to kind of like get over expectations from what happens or how people perceive it? Well, I think a lot of my thick skin came from music initially because I'm used to getting the reviews there, you know, and I got every kind of review because I was doing like angry music. I was screaming. It wasn't particularly melodic. Um, it was loud. It was fast. It was angry, you know, and that's the kind of music that if you like it, you love it. And if you don't like it, you're like, Ugh, you know, and so... You know, I got tons of bad reviews and it's like I dealt with all that at like 18, you know, and like I was getting these reviews. And so like I had to get over it fast you know, to keep working. And so now when people criticize whatever I'm doing, I'm like, I'm the first to criticize my movie. I don't think anything I've done is to my level of what I want to be doing. You know, I want to get I want it to be more perfect every time. And so like if you tell me something is wrong with my movie, I already know. You know, like when I read the reviews, they're like, yeah, I agree. I don't think it stops the movie. I think it's still fine. I think it's still watchable. I think it's still fun. But yeah, I agree. You know, 99% of the time, they're not wrong, you know. 
Um, so I think it's like letting any of those criticisms that come either from critics or your friends or whatever, like you can't let that stop you. You can either like assess it, see if there's something to learn from it or disagree. Like I think disagreeing is fine. I think focus groups aren't necessarily your friend, you know, <laughs> like when you bring your movie to people, like what do you think? Because like they're not going to necessarily have the, all the same background information that you brought into it and why you made those choices as you do. And so, they, you know, they're coming up with their own things and like they should do their own movie, you know? Um, so yeah, it's really just like a thick skin. Like I don't, you can say anything to me at this point. <laughs> I've heard it, you know, and I don't care. I'm going to keep moving.